if you STP, you'll get J O Y and you sure won't D I E. about that? Huh? See, I'd listen Sunday night. That was all right. I just added the D-I-E. That's all right. It's good to be in God's house tonight. Good to see you this evening. And trust you're doing good, feeling good. are thankful to the Lord for his blessing for allowing us to come to church. I'm going to tell you, it's the will of God for us to come to church. Amen. Amen. Yes. It is the will of God. Yes. Yes. And it uh, doesn't matter what smart people say. doesn't matter what anyone says. It's the will of God. Yes. And it does us good when we put our hearts and our minds in our efforts to worship Him. Yes. And uh, it changes the scenarios. It changes how we look at things. It changes how we go through things. Because we go through it with a different mindset. Right. When we learn to praise the Lord and magnify Him through our difficulties. Yes. The good times and the bad times. Whatever it may be. Season in our life we learn to praise him. It helps us uh, to take things that have, well, lemons and make lemonade because he is the sweetener in our life. Yes, if you have your Bibles tonight, let's go to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua in chapter 10. The book of Joshua in chapter 10. I talked y'all up now while I was down in Florida. So y'all better not let me down. I talked y'all up big time, didn't I, Eve? Huh? I know, but I'm just telling you. I talked about our southern slang. I talked about all that soul food. And I talked about just good people. And yes, I'll tell you what. They excited. Bless you, Lord. Joshua chapter 10. And let's go to verse 12. The Bible reads this way. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves. Oh, I'm sorry, I started 13, I'm sorry. 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. And thou, moon, in the valley of Ajalon, the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about the whole day. There was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. You. you may be see, seated. I'm going to take my thought tonight out of verse 13. It said the sun stood still and the moon, moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Come on. I want to preach along this thought tonight. Fight your enemy till he's dead. Fight your enemy, or don't quit till you kill him, whichever one you like. Don't quit till you kill your enemy. I, I can see it. I saw your eyes. The preacher's advocating murder. Come on, brother. Well, I'm going to tell you something. They, some of us need to kill some enemies. They, some of us need to kill some things in our life. Come on. Some of us need to kill some things that the enemy's putting away. Yeah. True. That hinder us. True. That cause us to stumble and cause us to fall. And we keep on fighting the same old things over and over and over. Come on. 
And when you do things, when you do things over and over and over the same way, that's what they call the height of insanity. Because when you do things the same way, it's set expecting different results. How can you? Come on. And a lot of times in our Christian warfare, we go about things the same way all the time and nothing ever changes. We're scratching our head saying, why God? Why God have I got to go through this? Why God won't things change? Why God can't I just get through this? And we can hear the Lord say, well, why don't you change your battle plan? Why don't you change your tactics a little bit? If what you're doing ain't working, it would behoove us to go to the master, to go to our architect of our plan right. and see what he's done different that yeah. we haven't. Yeah. See where we erred away from the yeah. grand scheme of things. Right. Come on. Right. Never in the history of mankind has this happened but one time that the sun stood still the children of Israel were fighting I believe in, in the land of Canaan fighting the Canaanites they were trying to get rid of an enemy they were on their they were on their way to Canaan these folks were in the way but you remember what God had said now God fought the first battle for me Jericho. God said, I'm going to fight this one for you. I'm going to do this one for you. But you're going to have to learn how to fight. And you're going to have to learn how to trust me. And you're going to have to learn how to do this. But I'm going to put them to flight before you if you'll just follow me. And so here they are. Joshua's leading them in battle. And Joshua has given them the uh, instruction, the encouragement that we're not letting go. We're going to put our foot on the enemy's neck and we're not going to let up till he's done, till he's finished. We talk about so many times about warfare in the Christian life. Yeah. We put our foot on the enemy's neck long enough to make him pass out. Come on. Right. And then we feel sympathy for it. We feel sympathy for our enemy. We feel sorry because we don't want to be that one that's mean. We don't want to be that one that's hard-hearted. Can I tell you something? Your, in your enemy's not worried about your welfare. Right. Your enemy's not worried about your feelings. That's true. The enemy's not worried about how you perceive him, friend. All he's after is to destroy you. All he is is after to tear you down and tear you apart. And so it behooves us, as we have learned through the great God Almighty, what did God do with his enemies? They fall before him, don't they? God has cleaned out the enemies before Israel, and God has set a precedent. If you're not for me, you're against me. And if you're not going to join with me, I'm going to annihilate you. We need to annihilate the enemies of our soul. Amen? I ain't preaching nothing foreign to you tonight. I'm not preaching nothing hard to you tonight. I'm just telling you somewhere we got to have some, some spunk in our hearts and our lives. We got to have some spiritual spunk about us. When are we going to get tired uh, of the enemy pushing us around? When are we going to get tired of the devil bullying us? When are we going to get tired of listening to that same old mantra that there's nothing we can do about it? I've come to tell you different tonight. There's something you can do about this. There's something that you can do to change this, to overcome this, to conquer this. And the first thing to do is quit listening to what the enemy said. I want to preach about some voices tonight. I want to preach about those foreign and strange voices that we allow ourselves to listen to. A lot of times anybody that mentions the name of Jesus, we're given credence to what they say. I've come to tell you the Bible even teaches us that everybody that says Lord, Lord is not of God. Everybody that does miracles in the name of Jesus is not of God. How you say that, preacher? Because the Bible says at the great judgment bar that yeah. Jesus is going to turn people away. They're going to look at him and say, but Lord, we did miracles in your name. We did this in your name. We did that in your name. And he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. I want you to understand tonight the name of Jesus is powerful. 
Amen. If mankind don't fear the name of Jesus, the devil sure does. The devil trembles at the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. And when the church would figure out, amen, there's power in that name, the church will be that overcomer. That church will be that victor. The church won't be scared to step on the enemy's neck, amen, until they hear that crack. Until they hear that gurgle, I'm telling you what the enemy has thrown at you and what the enemy has brought your way, amen, in form of habits, in form of things uh, that keep you from drawing closer to God, it's time to kill them. Amen? You hear it all the time. Folks in the house of God are professing Christians uh, and the detestable habits that they have. And it ought not to be that way. We ought not to have those habits that cause us shame. We ought not to have those habits that we have to hide. We ought not to have those things that kind of make us shy away from other people. Listen here. To know the Lord and to be of Jesus Christ is to know godliness, is to know purity, and is to know holiness. I, I've come to tell you tonight, amen, I wasn't holy when I met him, but when I met him, he started a work of holiness in me. Hey, I, I wasn't, he cleaned me when I got saved, but there was still work to do. There was still cleaning to do. There was still changing to do. But I allowed the Lord to continue to work with me, to change me, to help me, to be an overcomer. I want you to understand tonight, folks, you are not a victim. The church is not a victim. We are not at the at the mercy of the enemy. I'm not here to beg the devil to let off. I've got a name above all names that can make him back off. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, he shall flee. At the name of Jesus, he's got to go. I'm not just throwing that word around for spirit banter. I believe in the power of the name. I believe uh, amen that people live in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that people are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe the enemy's got to go down in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. I don't believe that enemy can stay in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't believe that when two or three that are like-minded in the faith get together and plead the blood of Jesus Christ, that the enemy can put down stakes and make a camp. I believe he's got to leave what he's built. Amen. And God will clean it up and give it to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're the church. The enemy looks like he's rich and increased with goods. But when the church would ever fear, figure it out. Amen. That we've been blessed. Uh, amen. By the riches and the splendors of glory. We got more than the enemy ever thought about having. Come on. Hear me tonight. But we got to kill that devil. Right. Amen. Yes, brother. Come on, brother. Free. <laughs> got to kill him. Yes, sir. One of the places that we kill him is in the altar. Yes. Right. Yep. I want you to understand that the altar is one of the most important, important places in the church. Amen. The altar is one of the most important places for the believer yes. to find in the house of God. I've told you there's three phases to the service. There's the music, there's the preaching of the word, and there's the altar service. Amen. Each of them have their own purpose in the service. But where the victories are won, they're one in the altar when God's people lumble themselves before the Lord. There's no reason for us not to visit this altar. There's no reason for us not to put ourselves in this altar and humble ourselves before God. Amen. If we stay away from the altar, we're staying away from the presence of God. This altar is literally like the Ark of the Covenant. It is the representation of the power and the presence of God that we come into the Holy of Holies where He is. Amen. And we humble ourselves before Him and call upon the mighty name of God. Amen. And ask Him to move and minister in our hearts and lives that He would ever be lifted up and magnified through the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. The altar, amen, is where things happen. The altar is where movers and shakers are made in the service of God. The altar, amen, is where the fire burns and is kindled and a, and a campfire is turned into a bonfire. Amen. And the world knows that we got hold of something that was greater than we are. The altar is where the sacrifice 
sacrifice is made. Amen. Yes, it is. Praise. Thank you. The sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of humility. The altar is where it's made. And we've got to have the power of the altar in our hearts and lives. I don't pray enough. I'll admit to you, I don't pray enough. But I don't know that we can pray enough. I would tell you in a self-evaluation that I, I need to pray more than what I pray. I need to pray more. But I'm going to tell you something. There's just something about it that wherever I am and I can just call on the name of Jesus, it just makes a difference in our hearts and lives. It makes a difference in my day. It makes a difference in my circumstance. When that enemy rears up his ugly head, amen, when things come my way that I don't know how to battle, that I don't know how to fight, that I don't know how to take them on. I just look and I call upon the name of the Lord and I say, Lord, I just need you to help me here. I need you to help me through this. I need you to give me wisdom. I need you to give me power. I need you to give me overcoming grace, Lord. I just need you to be you, God. We need that power of God, that light of God to shine in our hearts and lives. We need the sun to shine within us. The Bible tells us that the sun stood still in the sky for about the space of a whole day. We understand that that's a powerful thing uh, when you begin to look at it, that the sun standing still. Just a few things about the sun, if you will. The sun, it's not a solid state. It is plasma. How about that? Another thing we know about the sun, that the sun is so big that you could put the earth in it a billion times. Did y'all know that? Well, y'all sure looked at me like you knew it. You wasn't impressed a bit. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Give me some impressed looks. That's big. That's huge. The sun is, the gravity of the sun is 279 times that of the earth. You think about that. Yeah. Yeah, y'all need to be surprised. God, know you didn't know it sitting there just looking like, yeah, tell me something I don't know, preacher. Come on, preacher. That's a lot, brother. 207, you couldn't stand up on the sun. If you could get to the sun, you couldn't stand up. You couldn't support your body weight on the sun. The sun is a balmy 28 million and 80,000 degrees. How about that? You cook an egg quick on the sun. 28 million degrees. Wow. The sun is. The sun's equator spins faster than its poles. I don't even know what that means. The middle of the sun spins faster than the edges of the sun. Yeah, what I said. <laughs> we'll find out. When you think about the sun, yeah. the earth rotates around the sun. It does. Now here, if I want to talk about the sun, that's the most important thing I want you to remember tonight. Come on. That the earth rotates around the sun. They tell, we, we've always heard the sun is 93 million miles away. It's actually 92,980,000 miles away. You can tell I've been on Google. <laughs> the Google, I'm sorry, Jesse. I had to get that the for Jesse. It makes him understand it better. You know, the Walmart, the Google, you know, the Texas Roadhouse just helps him grab hold of it better. 93 million miles away, basically, approximately. If the earth, if the earth were to vary one degree closer to the sun, 
or farther away from the sun. We'd either freeze to death or burn up. Come on. You think about that. Wow. And for all these years that God threw the biggest star in the Milky Way that we know, the sun, He's put the earth in a perfect rotation where the earth has been perfectly affected by the power of the sun. Because it takes the power of the sun to make the earth go. The moon does its thing, but you want, the moon affects the tides. But yet the sun affects the growth and the nurturing of the planet. And so that sun, if, if the earth were to tilt on its axis in any way, we'd be destroyed. And so, for me, to know that our earth rotates in itself, and it rotates around the sun, and it flies that perfect pattern for however long that God put it there. Come on. I don't care nothing about except the last 6,000 years. The earth could have been here for 2 billion years. I don't know. All I care is about is the last 6,000. You know why? Because that's when Adam and Eve come. Right. That's all that matters to me because that's where it all started for you and I. Amen. Amen. So for however long that earth has been rotating, and whatever God did to make the earth to do what the earth has done to help us to be able to live here as we live, it is a testimony to the power of God. It is not by chance. It is not by a cataclysmic explosion in the universe that order came out of disorder. It was at the hand of God that God took his hand and he slung the stars out in this universe. And he told them to stay there. And the planets and the suns have done exactly as the command of God. But when we begin to think about the obedience of the planets... We have to get to the place where the church has got to follow what the planet does. The planet obeys the voice of God. And if we're going to be those Christians that are able to victor and conquer, we're going to have to rotate around the sun. I'm not talking about the S-U-N. I'm talking about Jesus Christ the Lord, the Holy Son of God. Our orbit is going to have to be an orbit around Jesus Christ the righteous in a perfect axis, in a perfect flight plan, plan. Amen. In obedience to the Word of God, He's going to have to be the epicenter of who we are. He's going to have to be the center of who we are. He's going to have to be the center of our existence. And when we get to the place where Jesus is the center of our Existence. We can have some Joshua's that can call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to quit with my enemy until I'm done. I don't want to quit with this battle until it is finished. God, you've given me the battle. I want to finish the battle. Amen. Make the sun stand still, Lord. Give me the time I need to defeat my enemy. There are those that suppose that it was the light of a comet that caused the earth to be lit for that period of time. There are those that suppose, and I've already told you about this, but there are those that suppose that the earth changed on its axis to allow the sun to do what it did. And you know, there's actually some that believe that the sun stood still. Now the Word of God says that the sun stood still in the sky. Now the thing about the Bible is you either believe all of it or you believe none of it. You can't have, you can't pick and tear it apart and take this and throw it away. And there's people that have said, Riley told me, said somebody told me, well, he said, you know there's more books than just the 66 books in the Bible. But them's the 66 that God wanted us to have, and that's what we need. Right. 
We can sit here and, and we can talk about semantics and we can talk about this and all that and we can talk about the canon and we can talk about uh, the ecclesiastical things and all of those uh, other books but God wanted us to have these 66 because he told us everything we need to know right here in these 66 books I want you to understand that God hearkened to the voice of Joshua when God when Joshua asked God to let the sun stand still to finish killing the enemy that God sent him to kill God sent you to kill the enemy. God sent Saul to kill his enemy. But Saul didn't do it and it cost him his kingdom. I want you to understand when God sends us to kill the enemy, we need to bring his head back. <laughs> Woo, we need to be like David. We need to have a sword in one hand and the enemy's hand in the other hand singing the praises of God Almighty. No, it's not that I'm heartless. Uh, it's not that I'm cruel or mean. Uh, amen. But God told me to live. And the only way I can live is if my enemy is defeated. The only way I can live. A productive life in Jesus Christ is if I defeat the enemies of my soul. And there are folks that have so many issues and so many problems with different things, with with drugs and alcohol, with uh, this material that's put out over the internet today. And all kinds of things that you see. It, it ain't just the internet. You can go to the grocery store and see it. People, people dressed. They, they near about prostitute themselves with the way they dress. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it's just a ploy of the enemy. To try to get us and get our eyes on the carnal things. What the flesh wants. Rather than what the spirit wants. The enemy will hardwire your flesh and he'll put a wedge between you and God. And he'll make you think there ain't no way you can get to God, but God's a wedge buster. The Holy Ghost is a wedge buster. And the Holy Ghost can make us free. Because the Bible teaches us who the Son hath made free, they are free. We are free by the power of God. I'm not beholden to the enemy. He's not going to guilt me into something. He's not going to blackmail me into something. He's not going to expose something on me that my father doesn't already know. There's no reason for me to fear the enemy. There's no reason for me to fear what he's going to say, what he's going to do. First of all, God's a searcher of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. He already knows what's there. Whether you tell him or whether you don't, he already knows what's in there. Huh? Ah, whether we speak it, whether we acknowledge it or not, he already knows. So therefore, the enemy can't blackmail me with it. Ain't God good? Ain't God good that the enemy can't blackmail you? And second of all, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord. The enemy can't put his filthy paws on me. Y'all ought to shout it about that, but you just sit there and looked at me. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, hallelujah, the blood of Jesus makes all the difference in my heart and life. He can tempt me. He can entice me. But it don't mean I got to give in to it. Huh? I'd rather be enticed by the Spirit of God. I'd rather be wooed by the Holy Ghost. I'd rather be blessed. God, amen, because the benefits of it are more greater, are far greater, amen, than anything that the enemy can give me for a moment. And what he's charged me to do is to forsake that enemy, to forsake myself and cleave to his unchanging hand and he'll give me the keys to the kingdom of God. And I got a key on that key ring and it's a key to the box. Huh? Oh, I know what you want me to do. W-H-O-O-P-E-M. Whoop them. Huh? We leave that box of whoop them on the shelf. 
Because we're afraid how the enemy's going to react. Right? Good. Good to see you, brother. Preach, brother. Well, brother David, I don't want to fight the enemy. If you blood bought, you're going to fight him anyway. Can I get an amen? Amen. Right. If you in Christ Jesus the Lord, he's your enemy regardless. He's going to fight you whether you want to fight him or not. Why not get him off of you? Right, right. Huh? Right. Why not drive him back with the power of God? Right. Why not drive him back with the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Right. Huh? You right. say, Brother David, you just you just itching and scratching for a fight. I've been fighting for the last 35 years. Right. Amen. Huh? And I'll fight until I draw my last breath. Or Jesus takes me home in the rapture. Hey Amen. But that's what I signed up for. I didn't sign up to be uh, one of these politically correct uh, uh, people uh, that, that wave signs or for peace. Uh, hey Amen. I signed up to be a soldier. And soldiers fight. And soldiers defend their kingdom. And soldiers fight for their captain and their general. Amen. And I signed up to be a soldier. I didn't sign up to be a pacifist. Man, I felt God in that and y'all didn't. I didn't sign up to run and hide. I signed up to get behind my armor. Come on, brother. And go forward in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. I ain't made no deals with the devil. You leave me alone. And I'll leave you alone. Come on. I figured it out. I don't have to look for him. He knows right where I am. That's exactly right. And got to look for him. I don't go behind every bush. I don't peek in every eye looking for the devil. He's out there somewhere. Come on. And see, the bad thing about it is he's whispering in some of his minds right now, and you're letting him. Call him out. Come on, preacher. Call him out, brother. He was doing good till right then. Preach. Call him out, brother. Truth will make you free. Because he's telling you, oh, he's just blowing off steam. Oh, he's just doing what he's hired to do is preach. No, I'm just telling you, amen, what the Lord's giving me right now. Because this ain't no way I intended to go. But the Holy Ghost is saying, I'm your truth. And I'm your deliverance. And if you want to be free, you can be free. If you want to unhitch from that yoke, I'll break it. I won't sit here and pit the knot, I'll break it. Huh? I won't sit here and struggle with it and look for something to help me do it. I'll speak to it and it'll be broken. I'll give you liberty. If you'll just let me. But you got to want to be free to get free. Come on here. You got to want to get better to get better. I know when I get sick, I sure don't want to stay sick. Hey, something in me wants to get better. Huh? When I get downhearted, I sure don't want to stay downhearted. There's something in me just gets tired of being downhearted, downtrodden. They just, uh, I get tired of it. Come on. And so I just start trying to find a way to feel better. Huh? That's right. Yeah, the sun don't shine in my day, in my day every day. You know, I have rain clouds, I have thunderstorms. But I know on the other side of that cloud, sun shining. And I know that cloud's temporary, but the sun's eternal. The light, the light of the sun is eternal in my life. And the enemy tries to cloud, the enemy tries to bring doubt, but God's been too good for me to begin to doubt what the Lord has done in my heart and in my life. And he's done it for you too. And it's time for us to perk up. Huh? You remember? Boy, it's hard to preach and not date yourself. Because I preach to congregations now that they, they don't know what you're talking about a lot of times. And you have to explain it. Come on. But they used to make coffee. It didn't always come in these pods. 
it used to be. Now, now I, I remember when they made coffee this way, when they boil water in a pot and take the spoon and put it in the cup and pour the hot water in the cup and stir it up and make coffee that way. And then they made a percolator. And then they put that coffee in there and that percolator and plug it up. And when that water got hot and it mixed that coffee up in there, it start blooping up in that little glass thing there. And they knew the coffee was ready to pour. Right. And then Mr. Coffee come along. And Mr. Yeah, I'm going to get to them in just a second. Mr. Coffee come along and, and did away with the percolator. And then the curate come along and has near about done away with the coffee pot, Mr. Coffee. Right. Because now we can get our personal cup of coffee. We don't have to make three or four cups. We can get our personal cup of coffee with our little pot. You can get it dark roast, medium roast, light roast, with toast. You can get it any way you want it. You can put Cool Whip in it. You can put caramel in it. You can put strawberries in it if you want to. Come on. You can get your coffee any way you want it now. Because things has changed. That's right. But I want to tell you what hadn't changed. I want to tell you the way that God moves on man hadn't changed. That the Holy Ghost hadn't had to adapt to the times. That the Holy Ghost hadn't adapted to convenience. That the Holy Ghost still requires you and I to put the effort for it. To seek the face of God. To seek His will. To seek His passion for our lives. To seek His direction for our lives. And when we seek Him, the Bible says we shall be filled. Oh, He'll put the perk in your later. Huh? I want you to understand tonight. We're not in a game. And Joshua was not leading the children of Israel in a game. Joshua was leading the children of Israel on a conquest. Because God said, inhabit the land. And drive the enemy out of your land. Overcome that enemy. Defeat that enemy. And in defeating that enemy, what it did is it sent a strong message throughout all the other regions that God was with Israel. Sent a strong message to the other people that they was going to think about it before they jumped on God's people. Because as long as they were trusting God, they knew there was no way they could win. Boy, does that, does that connect the dot for you? That when you trust God, and you go with God. The enemy knows he can't win. It's when we begin to doubt him. It's when we begin to pull away from him. It's when we begin to chart our own course and say, Well, God, I believe I can do it better this way. No, you can't do it better your way. Your way's a mess. Your way's a dead end. Your way's a travesty. You do it God's way and you'll have a victory. Was I pretty clear on that? If we'll quit telling God what to do and just listen to what God wants us to do, right. it'll clean our life up. Right. It'll clean our walk up. That's the truth, brother. That's a good preaching. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word. But if we're going to do the will of God, the enemy's got to die. That's the truth. That's the truth. Got to die. There's, there's no living in peace. There's no living uh, in the same space. This space has got to be cleared for the presence of God. And when you allow the Lord to help you clear, kill your enemies, you'll find your mind will clear. You'll find your reasoning will clear. You'll find your joy will be made full. Not, I, I'm not saying that we won't have our battles. It's a battle to get there. It's a fight to get there. You've got to understand what I'm telling you tonight. That it's just not going to come, like Disney said, wishing upon a star. You know, Tinkerbell ain't going to come and wave her wand and give you a little pixie dust and make it better for you. That's right. 
These battles are won in the trenches of prayer. These battles are won in the trenches of faith. And these battles are won in the trenches of trust. And when we allow those things to transpire in our life, we'll live a victorious life. Well, y'all ain't shouted. I'm going to quit. Boy, I tried. But somewhere along the line, we've got to get that gumption of the Spirit of God. Amen. We're not afraid to engage that in. And we're just like David. You see that giant. You recognize that giant. But you're not intimidated by that giant. Because you see who's standing behind that giant. Amen. And the God that is for you is greater than the enemy that is against you. Amen. And God said the battle's not yours. It's his. Right. You just got to be willing to engage. Amen. He'll bring you through. Let's stand. Let's stand together. I'm sorry. Let's L stand up. Y'all didn't understand English. I thought I'd give it to you in Spanish. El Raza. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. Thank you. That was funny right there. Thank you. God loves you tonight. But you know what? Here's what I know God just wants some soldiers. That are ready to take up that battleship. That are ready to take up that sword. They're ready just to say, Lord, I know I don't have the strength in me. Lord, you said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so I'm standing on your word tonight. Lord, I'm standing on this, stepping out on this battlefield. And I'm going in the light of your love. I'm going in the light of your word. And I'm going in the power of your word. And Lord, we're going to engage this enemy until we defeat him. Until he is dead. That I don't have to fight him no more. That's the thing about it. When you kill the enemy, you don't have to fight that enemy anymore. We'll open up the altar tonight. Let's come. Let's have a season of prayer. Let's ask the Lord to give us that warrior's mentality. Fight the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ.